Hello, I'm Russell Brand, this is The Truth. Do you ever want to hear an unbiased perspective on socialism because you're sick and tired of nonsense? So do I. That's why I watch Bill O'Reilly on Fox News to get a proper breakdown of socialism instead of the crap I keep seeing on the telly. A group called Victims of Communism Memorial Foundation has released a report on American attitudes towards socialism and communism. Study found that 32% of millennials, a third of them, believe more people were killed under George W. Bush than the Russian tyrant Joseph Stalin. Is that amazing? In what I think is an advance of my own spirituality, when I see Bill O'Reilly now, the first thing I feel is love. Only 42% of the millennials have a favorable view of capitalism. 46% they vote for a socialist like Bernie Sanders. Joining us from Washington, Marion Smith from the Foundation. Let's get into George W. Bush and Stalin. Um, if you don't know who uh, Joseph Stalin is... He was a solo artist at the same time as Bill Haley and the Comets. It's uh, Joel Stalin and the Bolsheviks, and their first single was called Gulag. He was a dictator in uh, Russia, Soviet Union, during World War II. He killed millions of people, so many people that they can't count them because there was no reporting on it. Yeah, bloody media manipulating the information. Luckily we've got Fox News to set us straight. And it was just mass slaughters that Stalin undertook. So as you can see, what Bill O'Reilly is doing is saying that communism and mass murder are the same thing. But what I would say is dictatorship and mass murder are the same thing. And what you know, like a pretty cold and simplistic analysis of capitalism and the, and the kind of capitalism that we have now is that it's really good at masking, disguising and managing the problems that it creates. I don't know very much about Marxism, but what I do know is he predicted that it was cyclical, self-destructive, would lead to an elite uh, uh, benefiting at the expense of workers, primarily because it comes from an idea of individualism. Some fella called Max Weber says that capitalism doesn't, isn't primarily an economic idea. He says it's a religious idea and comes from Protestantism, the idea that your personal striving here on this earth leads to being looked upon favourably by God. That capitalism was able to um, use that as a kind of jet fuel for that economic ideology because you as an individual are sort of responsible for yourself and your own relationship with God. The idea of community is diminished and even the idea of family. Stalin was as bad as Hitler. All right, it's the same thing. He just killed different groups of people. But really what's been described there is sort of dictatorship and mass murder and genocide. If you look at Das Kapital, and I don't recommend you do because it's a bloody hard read, it doesn't go kill everyone, <laughs> that's not in there, it's share everything, have more leisure time. I think people don't think about that about Marxism because he looks just like an angry Father Christmas whenever you see that picture of him. Now, I'm Karl Marx and I'm pretty bloody serious about economics. But like when you read some of it, it's like you should be able to get a lot more time off, you know. Who among us doesn't feel that you're trapped in a senseless cycle of working for no real reason and are detached from personal joy? And who will give us an unbiased perspective on communism and its goals? The Victims of Communism Memorial <laughs> Foundation. Let's turn to them. Well, we have a sort of withering uh, critique of the American free enterprise system and of our own U.S. history. And at the same time, millennials, and I don't want to be too hard on them, I am one. I am a millennial. It's a word that started coming around lately, isn't it, millennial? It's one of the first words that started to make me feel old, like documentaries on Euro 96 and Oasis. I don't like this millennials thing because it tells me that I'm basically now some old granddad. <laughs> What's that racket outside? It's those goddamn millennials. What are they doing? They're destroying an effigy of George Bush and putting one up of Joseph Stalin. You idiots! Um, are finding sort of a difficult job environment as they graduate from college and enter the workforce. Uh, our poll also found that there were more people uh, my age, the millennial generation, who thought our economic system worked against them. Marion Smith, the millennial I believe he is, has just described exactly why people would be interested in socialism because they're experiencing what they're living in now and seeing that it doesn't work. So we're ready for an alternative. And Bernie Sanders obviously changed the landscape of politics. One generation younger than us, uh, those who are in high school now, half of them would vote for a socialist and uh, one in five would vote uh, for but a communist. they don't communist. even know what socialism is. They don't even know what it is. They don't know what socialism is. 
All right, well, let's break it down a little bit. Control banking have a steeply gradiating taxation system and control public amenities. Those are the sort of the main things. And those things would benefit the life of loads and loads of people. That's why you have to go, yeah, but mainly communism kills 100 million people. But what right. I'm, I want to get back to my question about not knowing who Stalin is. <laughs> I want to get back to my question. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? It's like he's at a picnic in his own mind and he just wandered away from the picnic. No, I better go back to my question. There it was. To compare him to Bush the Younger is so absurd, it's painful. It's not a straight choice, is it? I mean, both of those people are irrelevant now. Why don't we try and have something just a bit better? So that tells me that the U.S. educational system, the public school system, is just that they're not teaching anything. It was just a question. They weren't doing it. Who killed more people, George W. Bush or Joseph Stalin? Not many people would go, well, I think it's absurd that you've even asked me that question. Good, right answer. You walk down and people your age, they don't know Stalin, they don't know World War II, they don't know anything. So how can they make responsible decisions about any economic system now? <laughs> yeah, you're right actually, young people are idiots. So what, Bill, the point of this piece I now understand is, young people are interested in socialism, but that's because they don't know enough about Joseph Stalin and they're not me. It's not because they can't get jobs, because they're having senseless, pointless educations that aren't leading to fulfillment of work, that they feel alienated and detached, and then when they watch the presidential elections, it looks like a ludicrous, mad, surrealist puppet show. It's because they don't know enough about Joseph Stalin and what a bastard he was. Well, it's right. I mean, what you see is a willingness to uh, almost blow up our own system rather than try to perfect it and refine it. Let's just try and perfect and refine this a little bit. It is perfect and refined. It's doing what it's supposed to do. It's doing the only thing it can do, protect the interests of the powerful. And so it would require ideas taken from socialism. That's the reality. And those ideas are starting to appeal. And I suppose what an astonishing thing that Bernie Sanders, in the face of this kind of media, got as far as he did. Uh, in favor of something that we don't understand, which is socialist systems. Uh, the ideas of, of Marxism. All we're talking about is, is it possible to have fairer systems of government? Don't need to complicate it with how many people Hitler murdered versus Joseph Stalin. It's not like a dictator World Cup. Just is it possible that there could be more sharing and more leisure time? Or are we already at maximum sharing and maximum leisure time? If it's not already at it, there's the possibility for more of it. It's the only thing that we need to think about. It is a dangerous thing, especially because uh, there is a sort of whitewashing of the term socialism, which really historically and intellectually is intertwined with communism. Sure. It's the same yeah. kind of government, uh, runs the show. That runs the show. Bill, your brain picnic's gone all wrong again. Communism is more, um, they confiscate more, like the Castro brothers. <laughs> the Castro brothers. Hey, we're the Castro brothers. We're here to confiscate. Oh, you've already confiscated. We want to confiscate more. As opposed to some socialist nations that don't confiscate property, but they confiscate income. <laughs> That's tax. Confiscate income. You still get taxed now. It just gets said, spent on public amenities instead of great big daft weapons and breaks for the financial industry. Mr. Smith, a fascinating study. Thank you. Everything you need to know about socialism there via the mind of Bill O'Reilly. Sharing and more leisure time. They're the only things that you need to consider. Anyone that talks about those things, give them a little bit of a break. True News, subscribe here. Nose is a tool that is abused to fool you and to leave you scared and confused. Trolls is like the nose. If the nose was true, I want some trolls. Let's have some trolls.